Okay. See you lo- <laughs> there hey, we go. I think there we go. Hello. 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 Hey, Opa. <laughs> Wait, why do I have music? We're oh, in. That's me. That's me. I got to do that. Boom. All there right. There we go. Are you done, Jim? Can we start? Yeah. Uh, are we good to go? I'm okay. Excited. All right. <laughs> Good, good evening or good afternoon to you wherever you are in the world. Welcome one and all <laughs> to the new normal. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing that almost everyone is now in lockdown. Apparently a quarter of the world's population are now, uh, are now locked up in their homes. So uh, I, I'm guessing most of you still haven't got dressed. Uh, you've been wearing the same clothes for days. Uh, I, I know I've made a special effort today. Especially for this, I actually got dressed today. I've not been just wandering under my pajamas, so you, you should feel honoured. Gen- <laughs> Gentlemen, how are we? How are we coping with, with this crazy new world? <laughs> well, uh, pretty good. I uh, forgot to turn off my firewall, so things look a little interesting here at the beginning. That should go away here. <laughs> Looks like it's mm. down, but uh, yeah, doing well. I, 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 I'm pretty introverted, so I can kind of do my thing just fine <laughs> how about you jim yeah you know it's uh it is a new normal and we don't know how long it's gonna last but no, we do we do jim 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 easter gotta fill the churches <laughs> uh i don't know i don't know what's happening <laughs> honestly all i know is that right now we are you know we're we're home and we're trying to be safe and we're trying to take care of everybody. And I would love it for it to be Easter. I would love for people to be able to go to church and to be with each other and do that kind of stuff. I don't see that right now, uh, but that's not what this episode is about. I think um, we're here to talk about our work and our experiences and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, I've got my sanctuary here and I can come into this space anytime I need to. Sometimes I have to do a couple of, shh, you know, I'm going to do a live stream kind of thing. And here I am doing stuff on the channel. So See, that's that's nice. We were just talking uh, just before we started with Kayla, but I've lost this as my little sanctuary now, my little space to go and hide away from all the chaos that's going on in the house. Oh uh, no! My wife's still working full time, and she's got an awful lot of work to do. So she's mm-hmm. now taken over this space for the most of the time. So I'm I'm back on the kitchen table, hunched over, and getting all my uh... back pain back again so i need need to to stop stop doing that but it's been you know it's all right it's quite nice that the whole thing of all the family being together i know we're we're kind of getting through it by having a bit of a routine i think that's become a bit of an important thing yeah uh you know not not treating it like a, a lazy sunday um because that's been quite an easy thing to to fall into the first few days of this so it's nice to have a routine i know for us that's been uh sort of lunch that we've been having at least two course lunch every day all getting together and that's been what we're kind of tying our day round. I know, Jem, you've been um, sort of anchoring your days around doing uh, an NXT for live stream. Well, that's no, but your d- the, the, the daily family, activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, over and over and over again <laughs> until I get it right. And then, uh, and then actually having dinner with the kids, which is a lovely thing. And it, I, you know, I really, is. that is the that is the plus of this is that I'm getting to spend more time with my family. And uh, as much as I'm down here in this space, it's really nice to all sit down at the end of the day. Everybody's taking it well, and uh, we will get through this. And we hope not too many people that we know are effective in a, in, a, in a majorly negative way with everything that's going on. And we'll push through. And there we go. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So it's right. been, it's, I'm kind of missing human contact a little bit outside the family. Um, so it's starting, this is week three for me. So this, I'm starting to get that cabin fever. So I've been so looking forward to hanging out with all of you tonight. Um, and we now need to crack a bottle of something. Gents, what are we drinking? Let's go to, let's start with Jem this week. What are you drinking? With me? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I went and replenished uh, the bottle. So I have the, uh, the Glenlivet. 14 cognac cask. Oh, nice. Uh, it's coming in, and uh, that's what I'm drinking. And it's going in to the vessel. There we go. I'm done. Very good. So, Caleb, I'm guessing whatever yours is, it's not going to be in a bottle that's that full. <laughs> uh, you are right, sir. <laughs> Amazing. 
today Beautiful. we're finishing up you son of a gun today we're finishing up uh ezra brooks this is a kind of a budget find that's not half bad and uh it is quite low I, th I think i might spend the rest of this month and the beginning of next just kind of finishing up all the bottles that are down to that last little bit yeah. that justifies keeping it in the cabinet and it looks pretty but it's just time so we're gonna get all this right. fired up very good yeah um i am i'm on the beer again this week so i'm on uh, this My is goodness. a local uh, local brewery again if you'd like to get all your jokes about this looking like toilet cleaner out of the way now uh, no I like motor no, oil no takers drink. okay cool um <laughs> so with the, <laughs> the plastic bottle thing so this is rampashak which is from up the road all oh. the mountain ranges in the czech republic uh, seem to have this giant figures and each one has their own and then each one has a beer named after them so this is my local mountain range uh Rampushak, which is excellent so i'm gonna pour that quickly and then we can get drinking and get on with the topic for tonight nice. beautiful yes. yeah i like it so while i'm pouring that good evening everyone in the chat lovely to see all the regulars in mr wood well done for staying up this late yeah, very impressive part. Bart, Kyle, David, Travis, Jake, Benjamin. Uh, mm. Guillermo. Alex is having, uh, Alex is about to drink some echinacea tea, strongly laced with honey, lemon, and cayenne pepper. I hope you're feeling well. Ooh. If you're using that as an elixir to not get sick, I have one recommendation. Okay, <laughs> so that's, that. okay, there we go. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, that's beautiful, Ben. Let's, let's, let's. Cheers. Cheers, good, good health, one and all. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, David. David says, I feel an awful April Fool's coming. Yikes, man. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Really interesting. By, by the by, by the way, this whole thing has been a joke. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I was I was adopted on April first, so I'm basically a joke to begin with. So that's always the thing we say in my family. Um, official adoption day, April first, nineteen eighty one. And not only to add insult to injury, it, as sort of like a like you know to celebrate my adoption, we went to go see. Uh, Barnum and Bailey a circus. So we went to the circus on April Fool's Day when I was adopted. So you go wow. figure how that all works out. Beautiful. I'm not. I'm not kidding you at all. That's fantastic. Uh, good. Perfect. Very good. All right. So this evening we are discussing our our mistakes, our our cock ups over the years, and how we have. Uh, learned from them. I kind of figure that quite a lot of the, the processes that I have put in place and the way that I approach jobs these days are as a direct result of a lot of trauma that I have brought upon myself in the past. So I thought it would be kind of fun uh, to go through some of these. There might be some little gems that people can get from it, uh, maybe not repeating our disasters. That would be great. Uh, so I don't know. I'm guessing you two probably have maybe not caleb okay caleb's too organized and you know sorry but but i know you've definitely got to have had <laughs> production cock-ups throughout the years oh, me? oh yeah. yeah i mean yeah too yeah, many yeah. To, to name but all learning lessons yeah. for sure yes. right all right so i don't know how do we want to do this i hadn't really thought this through to beyond beyond hey you're the yeah, host kid I know. All right. So how are we going like, to let's let's break it down by because I reckon I, I, I thought there are probably three or four areas of major. Oh, and can we swear tonight or are you wanting to monetize this? Whatever. Did you say the, <laughs> the, right, the CV I'll... phrase yet? In which case. <laughs> yeah, don't, use that. don't use the one that people use in Australia and in the UK with, you know, that one maybe we'll save. For, yeah, know, no, fine. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We okay. can we can use an S word here and there. A bomb can be dropped occasionally, 
but it has to have meaning. There, ha It has to be motivated, just like lighting, it has to be motivated. You, you so. know me well enough to know that I'm not just going to drop it in a, you know, it's going to be classy if, it, if I put the thing in there, of course it is. And of course, you, know, you, pour, you, pour, you That's, pour a little this, British accent on top of it, and it's... Exactly, you exactly. get away with anything. Say with whatever you want. Side of the fund. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll do my best to rein it in for as, as long as we can. We'll, we'll try and keep some pennies flowing away for, for a little while. Um, yeah. So I thought that of, of the the cock ups that we are likely to, or is that have I just blown that anyway? The <laughs> that, that we make probably fall into several categories. I think for me personally, it's things like destroying gear. Ian Wood, who is in the chat, um, will he always makes a joke about me being clumsy and has witnessed several pieces of gear being destroyed by me being not very careful. Uh, yeah. There is and, and things like. Um, just sort of communication issues, forgetting things, not having what you need with you when you go out on a job. But also, and I think this is where we start, have either of you had a major data issue? Have you got back from a job and have wiped the day's work before it's been backed up? Has that ever happened to either of you? And will you admit it? Because of course it has. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> have you had to make yeah. the call to the client? No. No. All right. So tell me, me how, you, how how did you work around it? Uh, I guess yeah, I'll what? go first, real quick. Uh, it happened to me twice, and uh, once was a like a photo gig. It was a, on the side of a video gig, and it wasn't a huge deal, but it felt awful because I had to go back and redo it. The other time was a YouTube video, and it was one. You know when like no mat, it just takes. You know, when you pour your heart and soul into a video mm -hmm. uh, and it just sucks life out of you. And then by the end, and then I screwed up the card, format it. This was, I don't even know, maybe five years ago. And then I didn't go back and make the video. I, I was like, I'm done. I don't care how much time <laughs> I put it in this time out. Okay. So there was no client call to make. That was a one of your own. Correct. But the project just never happened. So Still soul destroying. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jem, was was this a paid gig that you lost yours on? It's happened. <laughs> we shoot a we shoot a lot we shoot a lot of fit, footage, and and fortunately for for me, in almost all situations, I'm not handing over raw footage to the client. So we're responsible for the edit, mm -hmm. and we just have to make it work. But it's not a good feeling. Um, end no. of discussion. Yeah. All right. So we, make it, we just... make it work. We make it yeah. work. I, th yes. I think same. Yeah. I've never done it to the, and there's, there's times when I, th I thought I've done it. And I don't know if you two did the same thing because we've, we've been over this many times on the show about our workflows for dealing with data and ensuring that we are backing things up properly before that card goes back into circulation. But every single time I hit format, I'm going through, have I, have I, have I done that? Is that backed up? Is that safe? Is that safe? Is that safe? And it's, it's yeah. always a scary moment. So, yeah, which is why again, well, what about Bart? Yeah. But Bart, Bart situation is something that I've dealt with many times, which is the, <laughs> the infamous, you say you're recording, but you're not recording. And, yes. you know, you think you've hit record and you're in a small crew, no crew situation. And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, you realize that there's no take there. When you have a client there, that's when it gets weird. So I did a job once for a client. We were up in Boston and I was responsible for all production. Then there was the company that my friends ran. They were responsible for producing and doing the interviews. We were doing a two camera shoot. And I would slate all of the interview takes. And I basically slated the take and realized that I hadn't rolled on a camera at all. So we started and we were in like, I don't know, five minutes. And they go, um, hold on one second. I just need to handle something. There's a problem over here. And we're not going to be able to use that. for so. I, I, I totally just, you know, covered the whole thing. <laughs> Went back over with take you know, next take. And I just slated the whole thing. And I said, let's take that from the beginning. I, usually it's a, I just heard an airplane or there's something in there that right. we have a problem. The audio right. can save your ass. Let's just be honest. Okay. <laughs> if there's an audio problem. So go, 
<laughs> audio is how you get the other take. And we started from the beginning, but there was nothing on the card at all. Um, so we, we saved it that way. <laughs> it, when I first I got, frequently do, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, I, I, I was just gonna say real quick, a similar where I first, uh, when I first was getting into oh. video, um, because I had a 7D and that whole like DSLR thing was so blowy uppy, I moved from yeah. real low in the ranks to camera operator. And our mm. sound guy bailed, who is an excellent, amazing guy. And this is a lot of narrative stuff we we're shooting. And so I had an H4N. So I handed it to a film student who said he had done sound work before. And remember the <laughs> good old fashioned H H4N? There was a setting where oh, you yeah. record, it starts <laughs> blinking, and then you hit record again and it goes solid. That's right. That's rolling. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We did five setups in a day. It was like a 12 hour day, five like scenes for a short film like professionally lit by a gaffer you know there's five actors actresses and uh all of it no sound oh yeah that oh no it was the worst feeling i've ever felt when it comes to like yeah a mess up we, we've gone back and reshot stuff so I, I i take that back there have been situations where we've realized as collectively as a small crew where there's a client but we're all working close together where we've realized that it's just we lost something or there's no audio and we've actually gone yeah. back and reshot an entire an entire portion of a project fortunately the good thing about that is even though you feel deflated you go to bed you are recharged and when you go in it happens in a quarter of the time because you really you know you've yeah. essentially that's become a big rehearsal yep. so um you know that's uh, which yeah. is also a lesson which you know uh, that we run into a lot right now with production is there's not enough rehearsal time that's generally put into things so there's always a rush 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 which just opens up you know the door to more mistakes so yeah, yeah it's crazy stuff it's that and, and working in two smaller crews not having enough enough people to be checking up on stuff and one person you know, I, I know this is with me an awful lot when you're doing everything particularly with conducting interviews and running the camera at the same time this happened to me really recently again you just get into the the wrong cycle with hitting record so you're just recording all the bits hold where on, you're coaching on, talent on. and figuring that out did we go weird on the audio or is that just me uh just mm, you i think just you Okay, good. Because I could not hear a word you were saying. That's fine. Okay, good. All right. As long as everybody else is okay, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. C can we carry on now? <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you. I did. I, I couldn't even yeah. tell what the heck yeah. you were saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> When you get caught in that cycle of just just doing the the yeah. record and and all you've done is recorded the bits in between the stuff you were wanting to record and uh, but interestingly I will then make a story up for the client as to what I've cocked up by going oh yeah sorry white balance set up I'm like, I've still just admitted a cock up why why am I less bothered about saying that I've cocked up the white balance or the sound or something than that I've been hitting record in the wrong order. It just seems less embarrassing. For yeah, some when, you, when you when you have to admit that the like most basic thing, yeah, the button, you know, that's rough. Yeah, but again, it's it's definitely a, a case of uh, just going back and checking stuff as as often as possible through the day and making sure you have got it and uh, better better making that little embarrassing admission at that time rather than getting back to <laughs> to base and then having to phone the client. And, and uh, yeah, deal with it then. So, okay. So there's no, none of us have had an absolute, well, Caleb's with the no audio thing. That's, that's pretty catastrophic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Luckily that wasn't me, okay. but I, you know, the lesson learned was don't just delegate something to an unknown person. Yeah. Anything like that. Okay. All right. All right. So let's move on to, uh, let's move on to, breakages damage what have we destroyed accidentally on jobs go caleb you lost me um i have uh are you there ben or jim oh he says i'm here me. hello he's, hello uh, he's looking at me like it's not working 
So I, was... <laughs> I don't think he can see us anymore, but we'll carry on and he'll be able to figure it out. He's got a little smirk going on. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Gear destroyed. I dropped a 70, 24 to 70 Tamron, which isn't a big deal like compared to other 24 to 70s. But to me at the time, that was like one of the most expensive things I owned. A uh, Remember that 24 to 70 that everyone loved from Tamron? Yes, I do. Yeah, dropped it from like chest height down to concrete, just straight down. And to their credit, they repaired it free of charge. And this is before I was like, you know, it's not like there was some like shady, oh, we got to treat this guy right or anything weird like that. Uh, So that was one of the more painful that I remember. And then at one point, somehow, I don't even know how this happened, but I was like setting up a rig and a V-mount battery is involved and I connected... I think we had multiple rigs and it was like two cameras right next to each other. And this this ridiculous setup and I connected a V mount battery to another V mount battery, uh, D tap to D tap. Uh They're both feeding to each other. Did Uh, that like when the the time space continuum just, yes. And then lots of smoke. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And this was before like core SWX, you know, this is, I don't know, 10 years plus ago. Yeah. Like, there weren't all mm-hmm. these fancy pants batteries we have now with like a bajillion protective, you know, circuitry involved. <laughs> so that was interesting. But I would say those are the two that I can think of. That's not too not horrendous. Bad. Yeah, no, not at all. Okay. Gem, what have you broken? Uh, I've, I've been pretty lucky. But had one job in a restaurant in New York, very close quarters. Uh, I look sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I can't hear what the hell anybody's saying. That's what's happening, David. It's all wonky donkey on my end. I don't know why. My connection's good. It's weird. So um, I had a situation where we were in this restaurant shooting a project, and it was just two of us, and really close quarters, tripod up. And the other person on the crew tripped over the tripod. And I think it was a 5D Mark III with a, a, a 24 to 70 or 24 to 105, not, not your lens. And the whole thing, I just heard a crack noise. And it was lunchtime. It was a busy restaurant. And I heard this crack. And the whole thing just was completely screwed up um, on the lens mount. So it was that you could just see. Fortunately, the camera was intact. It was just the lens that was completely screwed up. We were able to get it off the camera body. Uh, I took it down to Canon and have them repair it. It wasn't too bad. Um, Had another project where we didn't actually break anything, but there was a swing who was up on the ladder and we had to constantly swap out batteries because of this little kicker light that we had and it had to be positioned out of frame because we had this super wide angle um, shot. And we were actually using large bricks. We were using like V-mount lock batteries. And Mm -hmm. this was at least a 98 watt hour battery. And all of a sudden I heard this thunk and there was a, there's like a wall. Look, look at the thing behind me that, that's right there. But imagine at the top of it that there was an opening and behind there, there was a cavity. Oh, no. And that, that battery, it was a rental battery. That battery is still sitting inside of that wall, inside of that person's house. And uh, they have no <laughs> idea. They have no idea. <laughs> I had to pay for the battery to the rental house, obviously. But that battery oh, is just sitting man. at and I was like, uh, I just hope it's okay. It's a battery. I was really concerned. Yeah. And we were there yeah, for like another. Day. Yeah, we were there for another two days and uh, uh-huh. and, and it, nothing happened. So that was kind of a, a, a little bit of a funny one. But uh, <laughs> that, that, that whole shoot was a funny one. So there you go. Do I look sad uh-huh. anymore, David? No, I don't. I can hear people now. <laughs> Chill out. Okay. All right. There we go. Great Dang. stories in the chat too. I mean, people are giving us yeah. some great stuff here too. <laughs> I mean, that that I've done so much kit. I think I've done almost the exact same thing as you, Jim. I tripped over a tripod. I was doing a re- really long exposure thing at night, 
and it was like a 30, no, I think it was at least a 30 second exposure. And I, I was on a motorway bridge and did getting all the, the light trails and the cars. And anyway, I stepped out of where, where I was, the position I was in to go over to look if there was another angle on the other side of the bridge. Well, that was on its long exposure and I felt my foot flick the tripod, but it was pitch black. I was going, nah, 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 grabbing at anything, trying to catch it before it hit the ground. And then just this sickening, ripping sound as it pulls the uh, the lens off, rips the lens mount off the 1635. The 5D was just, it was a 5D3 as well, completely twisted, the screen shattered. You could see completely into oh, the guts no. of the thing. So I sent it all back to Canon no, and I've, done, no, I've ripped no. I've ripped lens mounts off so many times before, and it's always like a hundred pounds. It's really, it's it's never as bad as it looks like it's going to be. Wow. And this time they said, no, we don't stock the parts for that lens anymore because it was the Mark One, the Five D with Canon Professional Services. It came back. It was fixed price service. It was like a hundred and sixty pounds, something like that, and it was a, a brand new camera. So that that was that was a bad one um, from the insurance wow. point of view. Yeah, like Ian Wood. So Ian. And I once did this job in a quarry, you know, those huge quarry dump trucks, like the Tonka yeah, toy thing, yeah, the yeah. enormous mm. cat trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to photograph one of those and this place was filthy. I mean, it's a quarry, so it's just full of like stone and mud and puddles and things. And it, this is in the UK. And uh, I was trying to get the light source to be as big as I could. And I had those Bowen's 500 watt monoblock heads. This was Still's job. Mm. And, uh, yeah, not being very experienced in using those outside, I thought it would be a great idea to run one of those off a portable generator. So that's 230 volts. Um, oh, so, gosh. I don't like where this yeah. is. Yeah. And then I thought what would be great without putting any sandbags on the sand as well. I thought, and this is in England with our sub amazing weather, to put a, an umbrella up on it. Gust of wind, thing went over, shorted, <laughs> flash. Uh, destroyed completely. There is a, a photograph that Ian has somewhere of this light and all just this mangled mess in this complete muddy puddle and oh. uh, me looking very sheepish. And the worst of that job was that it was right in front of the client, which always just makes you feel horrendous oh, yeah. and incompetent. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad Ian's uh, like howling with laughter, reliving that I was hoping you might have passed out after drinking those beers, Woody, before I recounted that tale. Is he in the chat? And so many more. He's in the chat, yeah. <laughs> so Under Wood & Co. Creative. Okay. Good times. Nice. Yes. Good times. Welcome back, Jeff. So, Good to see you. Yeah, it Can just keeps us? bumping me out of the room. Yeah. Oh, weird. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. There's a little Can delay. Can you hear me? It. Yep. It's better now. I, yeah, I put in yeah, okay. I put in a little tech support thing. Um, mm. It's ridiculous. Mm. I am here. I'm here, and I'm happy as oh. ever, David. <laughs> it's like I'll let David live that one down. So that goes. <laughs> that's that's all of our broken gear. So that Sam yeah. Sam's just said that he left a tripod on the top of his car, drove off down the interstate till it eventually flew off into traffic. Now. Which brings me on to another subject, which we may or may not have done. Have either of you damaged someone else's property or someone else on a job? Uh, knocked someone's lens off a table once, but they had a UV filter. And it's okay. it. Yeah. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I've had close misses. I've had close misses with, um, shall we say green crew and uh let's just say that righty tidy lefty lucy is there for a reason and mm -hmm. i have uh one particular shoot an interview with somebody that i knew fortunately uh at least well enough where the light and the light stand missed them by maybe 12 to 18 inches Jeez. So that wasn't good. Yeah. Oh. So mm. that's that to me. And, and, you know, as a producer, a lot of things go through your mind. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, oh, shit. Uh, but the, the main thing is to make sure everybody's okay. Those should be the first things that come out of, you know, your mouth. Is everybody okay? 
And that's the deal, you know. So uh, I've been fortunate, you know, over the years that that with uh, with good prep and stuff, we mm-hmm. have not had any major issues. But insurance is very important. And uh, you've got to have liability at minimum when you're going in with a, a group of people. You know, you're going to your friend's place and you're shooting an interview and you're doing something like that. Fine. But quite honestly, you should get production insurance of some form. And anytime you're going on a, on a production, even if they don't ask you to take out an additionally insured, you should just do it. Just add that location for your own protection even if it's your friend's house. If you're going to your friend's house and you have production insurance, just send the insurance company or if you log in and create your own you know, uh, certificate of insurance, just set that up because it's, it's just smart. That's all. But yeah, that was scary. When it gets close mm-hmm. to the person and you see their reaction and they let it go and then you wonder a day to a week later, are they going to do anything? And they don't really yeah. have any, you know, any and anything to stand on if they don't actually get hit or hurt. But, um, you know, uh, trust me, if people get hurt, they might be fine on the day, but they're sh- they're 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 shaken. But don't be surprised if they come and you know they come after you afterwards. That's that's possible. Yeah, yeah. today's yeah. world of hypersensitive social justice warriors. I mean, mm-hmm. anything's possible now. Someone could be like that. Right. Traumatized me and. Yeah, exactly. That was you know, emotionally it's, it's that emotionally world. scarred me. It's a crazy world yeah. we live in. That brought up, you know, that triggered my whatever syndrome. Yep. Yes. One hundred percent. I think, and that's a lot worse in the U.S. than certainly in the U.K. Although the U.K. is getting far more that way here, it's definitely not that way at all yet. But we'll see how how that goes. Um, but I, I've had two that I think had did they happen? Had they happen now? Uh, may have been different. One, um, I was working for this charity who rehabilitate uh, firefighters who've been injured or that they're just, um, even if it's not something that's that's happened during their working life, they may be just been ill. It's an amazing centre and a fantastic charity and uh, it was a really nice job to do. And they were, they had this jacuzzi to this hot tub uh, in this swimming pool area. And I was on a six foot tall ladder shooting down and i had uh thankfully not monoblock heads but the little elinchrom uh, quadra rangers which have uh, the battery pack and flash unit separately and then just the, the head along a cable and uh, that was on a, a lighting stand and i asked um the pr officer who i was dealing with who i was working under if she could just move it like a meter to one side Mm. And she picked, and and the light stand was probably extended, uh, I don't know, maybe like 10 feet. And she lifted it from the bottom foot with one hand. And the thing just went into the jacuzzi with all the people in it. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have a real problem with water in in high voltage. Yes. Thanks for that. (laughs) Thankfully, that one, that one, that flash unit doesn't have anything high voltage in at the head end. A, mono, a Bowen's monoblock head would have been an entirely different situation. Somebody would have gotten a little two twenty tickle. Yeah, thankfully, and again, this, this 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 is a low voltage thing, which I would have never had by a swimming pool anyway. I have to. <laughs> <stress. laughs> honestly, honestly, when things are a little bit, you know, boring, I'm always looking for a little two twenty tickle. <laughs> So, you know, that's, that's a great name for a production company. Call it 220 Tickle. It could be a name for something else, too. Oh, a description. Yeah. <laughs> the 220 Tickle. What happened last night? I don't want to talk oh. about it. Let's just say it was a 220 Tickle. Okay. Three dongles down, and I was in a 220 Tickle, baby. Right. Okay, I, so. I, I, I've just also, because, again, Unfortunately, Can somebody Ian, write that down. Somebody write down 220 tickle. tickle. Yeah, okay, good. Don't forget that. That that is uh, classic, Caleb. By the way, <laughs> glad you glad you enjoyed that. I did, and I, and I had forgotten about this one, but but unfortunately, Ian still hasn't passed out and gone to bed. Uh, and he says, "BB, you forget I ended up in hospital for a week after the tent shoot in Keswick, <laughs> which he did, 
that wasn't strictly my fault. Uh, this was a camping shoot and Ian was modeling sure, for me, <laughs> which is <laughs> so, uh, and it was three of us were quite good friends doing, uh, doing this, this, <laughs> this, this job. And we ended up drinking outside these tents until like four in the morning and paddling out. And yeah, he got pneumonia or something, but that was nothing yeah, to do with me. Uh, the, the only other one, which was really scary, and I think the one that, in retrospect, you know, ha had that happened now, might have got me into trouble. I had a, a tripod on my backpack, and I was photographing this. Um, it was a festival, and it was a lot of people around, and I was wandering through the crowd. And this woman spun around to say hello to a friend, and just face planted into my tripod head. Blood absolutely everywhere. Gee, nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of she span into me, but you don't know where you stand because she stood in span into my yeah tripod. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things. So, so those are mine. Yeah. I've not killed anyone. That's good. Mm. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> those. Were... So all right. So so. <laughs> I feel like I've come off worst on on that particular one. Uh, but I, again, you, you, wait. I just want to say something. The chat is trumping us by miles, like people almost dying on set, electrocutions out the window. I saw uh, somewhere up there a $100 million film stunt, not recorded, yeah. took yeah. out 220 k to pay for it, pay out from the insurance company. Electrocuted on a Cartoon Denver. Network shoot in the Bahamas, numb arm for a day, then back to work. Um, 360 uh, grad, Barton. of course, coming in with the 226 already. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bart, uh, filming in an Airbnb through a party, barely covered it up, broken windows, cigars, plants. Called the owner, told him more sure, than us. Are you sure that was an NAB? What are you talking about? <laughs> Wasn't yeah, that your room at NAB, Bart? <laughs> Wow, I think it was 360 wow. grads room. Is I don't think it was. Oh uh, god, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. 360 grad was there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and and Sam, I've also what is, done what the is same 360, thing. 360 grad. What is I? I knew it. Caleb has the whatever syndrome. I don't know what that means, but enlighten me. I don't know. I don't know. Right, yeah, I'd like to know what that means. Let's get some uh, clarification on the whatever syndrome. Um, we got it. We got to hear that. It was, ha ha, it wasn't me. Bart, let me just tell you, you roll up with an entire, what are those things, those coolers called the Yeti coolers? Those are the ones that cost like $300. So I could see Bart showing up in like a pickup truck with like four Yeti coolers and 30 pounds of meat. And he yeah. comes in with like an egg barbecue and uh, like 20 cases of beer. God help that hotel. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm. uh yeah yep all right uh, uh em em embarrassing embarrassing let's move on to that category nice oh embarrassing yep. things okay here we go yeah yeah oh um, embarrassing i'll go mm, first mm. this one's this one's one of the, my more embarrassing ones i forgot an entire audio kit like all the audio gear <laughs> the only thing that was audio related that made it to the set was a camera, you know, cameras with built in microphones. Um, and it was, it was, uh, of course the location was like two hours, two and a half hours away oh. from where we were based. So we get there and I didn't have anything and it was a very mm. audio. <laughs> this is, I'm going to get real with you. <laughs> it was a senior yoga DVD. Yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I, I've done yoga DVDs, not yep. with seniors though. Yeah, yep. senior yoga, and uh, <laughs> left all the audio equipment. Uh, it paid great, but so um, my boss uh, or, or the the director producer in charge uh, was so mad that he went back to get it, uh, and he made great time. He was quite red before and after getting back. So uh, from that moment on, I put together an emergency video kit every time I fly and drive. Actually, I kept it in my car. It was a bag with an extra audio recorder, a microphone or two that could get me through uh, a couple extra SD cards. So it's like a, it's like a, a video emergency kit, an extra tripod, an extra plate for the tripod, 
so that yes. no matter what, if I was driving there, um, I had basics that could get yeah. me through, you know? Yeah. And That's then when I fly, idea. and then when, when I did fly, uh, for gigs, it was, uh, the same kind of stuff, but in the bag, which is, yeah. You know, I'm not that organized, but I think it's, it's great nowadays to just have like a little thing like this. And even if all you've got in there is like a wireless go with a lav and a small, you know, um, video mic NTG, the, the deity, you've just got some core little kit to get you through. The other thing oh, that yeah. I used to travel with all the time was the smart lav plus for, and that got us out of a pickle once because there was a problem where somebody, the audio guy, like didn't have something with them. And mm -hmm. I had a smart Love plus. And what we did is we plugged it into my iPhone and we just plugged it into the, you know, we put that in the person's pocket. I started recording. I put the lav on them and we actually had audio. They, they had run out of batteries. We were in New Mexico. The sound recorders ran out of batteries. They were no longer able to record to their $14 million sound devices, <laughs> mixer recorder. Oh, no. And I, and I had a smart Love plus. And we had to get like two more takes with our instructor for this Canon video we we're doing. I just coming to, you know, coming back to me. And that little stupid $79 mic got us out of uh, a situation where we would have not had actual, you know, close to production based audio for the thing. Isotope RX, Bob's your uncle. By the way, Victor says, oh no, I miss most of it. Whoops. Victor, that's because you're playing around with your Russian doll trucks over there where you're putting tiny trucks into bigger trucks into other bigger trucks. Have you seen I this, guys? That too. Oh, it's ridiculous. Wow. So that's why you're I missing it. it. So I have no Twitter? empathy for you whatsoever. It's, it's amazing. He has like a full-size truck, but it's like a mini full-size truck being put inside of another truck. The I mini full-size truck's a Unimog. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'm so, so jealous of his workshop. And yeah, well, it's perfect. It's guys. perfect for the apocalypse that we're experiencing right now. You could probably get out of a pickle um, in that little truck. I can see you, you know, with all your video equipment and Caleb's, you know, backup audio kit. Ridiculous. All right. What we got the pouches. We're three pouches down yeah, with the, the 220. Pouches. What's it called? A 220 tickle. 220 tickle. We should have we should put that into the super chat. It's some people could actually. How come I don't have super chat going right now? I think I do. Eh, who cares? Just keep your matter. dongles and your two twenty tickles and your pouches separated. Bad things happen. You start. Un unbelievable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's not a good idea. Yes. Um. That, yeah. it's, it's a there's, good tip though. The emergency kit. That's that's. Uh, yeah. And like this was uh, when I was like, you know, when you're putting early on, you're putting together your kit. It's always changing. You're like relearning how to pack every time. Uh, yeah, or every mm -hmm. big gig every couple months. And uh, and then if you're doing like YouTube mixed with that, it's a mess because you're like using it for your stuff at home. You're putting it back in its bags. It's a bad idea. But I remember this one uh, gig I was on with this guy who was legit, had been in the industry for 40 years as a sound recorder. He worked on um, Sound of Music, like the guy at the cart, the wow. truck, the whole thing. And we're uh, a bunch of us. Uh, including the uh, uh, a producer were like, so how do you like, what's any tricks for, you know, packing gear and equipment, making sure you have the right stuff. And he's like, when all the shelves in my garage or when all the cases in my garage on the shelves are in my van, then it's time to go. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Just it's all packed. Yeah. Ready to rock, which I've always been jealous of audio yeah. people, you know, cause it's, if you've got a cart in the whole nine yards in a van, you're done. I used to do that with when I was living and working in the UK, then that's what I did. I had a, a van um, and other than cameras, which everything had a space in a box or a couple of pelly cases. Mm. So you, that was exactly how it was. That's where it lived because the house we were lived in at the time wasn't that big. And I managed to make sure that my right. insurance covered me for at least that amount of gear to be left in the van, which you need to check your insurance policies for that if you're leaving cars and uh, leaving kit in vehicles. Right. Because it's often an exclusion. Um, so I made sure that I had that cover and that's how I worked. And it was brilliant. But now, because I work uh, a bit here, a bit in the UK, and it's but not at the moment, um, but it, it, all over the place, 
then it, it is difficult. And the pouches are how I organize things. And I have a, a list of pouches and stuff stays in those. So when I do a job, you'll see the whiteboard behind me, which is now empty because I have no work on. Um, that in the days running up to a, a big job, I'm just constantly everything that comes into my head. I'm just filling, writing that down. And then they get rubbed off as they go into my bag. So it's the right. sound kit, which is in this pouch, this pouch, and everything stays. If you go into my cupboard behind, it, through that door there, um, I have sort of a fairly big walk-in cupboard, and that's everything's in pouches. So it's just grab it. It's not individual items. It's just that's the sound kit. That's the wireless kit. Yeah. One thing I was, yeah. Yeah. did the night before, the morning of, for whatever reason, if I had a gig, I had to be up. I have to be up earlier, way earlier. Like if it, yes, I'll give myself like two hours before I have to leave. Just because I don't know, it's weird, but just mentally building up the kit. Yeah, it's, if it's a reasonable. That's not edit, weird. Like a that's math, not weird. That isn't weird. That's like completely literally normal. in my head. All right, camera got the plate underneath yep. the camera. Slide it out of the tripod. Yep. 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 Audio recorder, battery, SD card for the audio recorder, media for the camera. Like literally building it in your head. You I mean, let's just something. yeah. I mean, this is this is there's two things about that which is, um, it's, and it's always going to bite you in the ass if you don't do it right. There's a reason that there's a thing called the checkout day in the industry and why you pay mm -hmm. a camera assistant to go into a rental house and actually take everything out of the bag and test it. And especially when, like you were saying, Caleb, you're in situations where you're doing YouTube content and then you're going out and doing a production, it's really easy for one cable to get put into the wrong bag. So do yourself a favor, as tired as you are, as exhausted as you are, you need to spend the time just testing the light, making sure everything works. Today I was gonna do a live stream and I had a 15 foot micro to full size HDMI cable that just decided to completely stop working for no reason. And then you know that really gets into the whole, you've gotta test everything before you go out on the production. You've gotta, if you're looking at a piece of equipment and saying, I don't think I'm gonna need that for this production, take that piece of equipment because inevitably that's the one thing that you find that you need when you're there. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, mm -hmm. and this really goes back to what you were saying before, and it has to do with audio, you have to have backup audio kits. That is one of the most important things, right? If, if As long as you're not using a camera that's the Yugo of cameras, fill in the blank, <laughs> Most of the time, the camera will be reliable in terms of working as long as your batteries are charged and you've tested everything and you know everything's there to, to go. Have extra media because a card can go bad. I just had one go bad about two weeks ago. It just Same. crapped out. And then all and then also and that that ju I just throw those sh that shit out. F forget the yeah. warranty. That's a bunch of BS. And then the second yeah. thing is have a second microphone. And even if your oh, main right. microphone is a fancy, you know, MKH 416 or whatever it's going to be, at least have something else, um, you know, that is a backup. And that could be a video mic NTG. That could be a deity, you know, uh, you know, less expensive shotgun mic. Have That's something that you can – a micro. Even the mic – exactly. Just get a Those little like video nothing. micro. I've got like three of them like just kicked in little corners and stuff. They're awesome. And they look, I, I, good if you get them close. Look enough. right here, right. There's one right here. There he and is. you got the micro and then, and then look at this. Where is it? It's over here. If I've got to get that microphone closer to the talent, I've got a long um, cable here as an extension so I can get that over to the person. And that's yeah. the same concept as that little, you know, uh, smart law of plus. If you can't get audio close to your talent, you're totally effed. We all know this, but we have to keep reminding ourselves you've got to have audio backup on a project. And by the way, I would go one step third. What? One step, one step further. I go, go one ahead. step further in, in terms of that. I I every job that I do, yes. I well, anything that I'm traveling for, particularly, and I'm I'm away from anywhere I could rent something with an hour's notice, every single yeah. thing. Every single I'm like an aeroplane engine. Everything any one thing can fail and I can carry on. So there's always two cameras, always. Always, obviously, multiple Amazing. lenses, but that goes, goes without staying. Same with, um, same with mics, same with lights. There's always got to be at least two. The, 
How do you do the heart thing? I'm not good at that. That's Taylor Swift's thing. I heart you. What do you want about? I, I, I heart you. I'm doing the heart thing. I don't know how to do it. And my kids don't know how to do it. I, I okay. made myself certain, really old right there. a big YouTuber that did a video um, on his bag setup and yeah. uh, his everyday carry slash camera equipment, camera bag. And he was saying, like, he decided one day he's tired of carrying all this extra stuff, so he's just going to carry the bare necessities. And I just died a little bit inside. Oh. Because I, I, I can't bring myself to do that. And I would love to. Like if you've got mm. really nice stuff or things you know, mm. like HDMI cables, you gotta carry extras. Yeah, Just yes you do. Die. Every uh, kind of cable to uh, high end. Yeah, but like I would feel better. Not that I would, but I would feel better about like a really high quality SDI cable, unless you like mm -hmm. drive a cart over it with a you yeah. know, or like take yeah. an axe to it. It's gonna be okay for the most part. Yeah. Look, listen, I, I am I am the, the the best and the worst when it comes to that. If I'm going to teach even a, a one-day workshop and I need two Sony NPF-style batteries for what I'm going to do, there's eight inside of my rolling bag because I, I, I inevitably come home with 90% with of that kit not taken out or used with what Ooh. I'm doing. But if you need to th – there's nothing better – there's no better satisfaction to me when I am on a project, whether it's a production or I'm teaching, and somebody goes, well, how do you do this? Or they don't have something, and they go into my little, my little bag of tricks, and I take out a little adapter or a little clamp or something, and we solve the problem. That, that makes my day. At the end of the day, I'm like, I solved the problem, and mm -hmm. I love doing that. So I'm going to bring that stuff with me in my kit and it's going to solve problems. And it's when I question, when I don't trust my instincts and I say, do I need that? That inevitably I do. And that is the big lesson is trust your instincts across the boards, even with clients. Um, and one thing I was going to talk about earlier, though, I don't think we're going to be able to get into this too much. The biggest mistake that I made in my career was at a certain point, I allowed money to be the motivator for what I was doing for a living. So it wasn't the byproduct, it was the driving force because we weren't making money. And so I took on a client and I made probably the biggest mistake of my career. You know, I used to write proposals that were very gray, not black and white. That was a big mistake as well. But I took on this client for somebody that I had done work with before. So essentially I wasn't stealing the client, but it was a client of theirs and I had a relationship with them. And I knew going into it that I didn't feel really great about that. It was a long time ago. That was the biggest mistake. I let money be the motivator. And it turned out to be the absolute worst client I have ever had in my entire life. Mm. And it became a nightmare of a situation. So always trust your instincts, but also be transparent. And anybody who has ever given you work in the past you always have to be transparent with them when one of their clients approaches you to do work. Yes. You got to yes, do yes, good yes, by yes. them. Do not ever do that shit. That is the effed up thing. And that will always come to bite you in the ass and it will ruin you. And I, I trust me, karma is a bitch and it will come around and it will come and bite you in the ass. Do not do that. Don't ever do I don't, that. That's it. But, but and conversely, that's dad, that's dad speaking right now. Okay, no, I mean, like, it, it, I had, I, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but I had this happen really recently. And it was, uh, it was a thing where I, I could have made a lot more money doing the other thing hmm. and bidding yep. off uh, another booking. But it was, it was like, you, you know, that that is going to come get you, but you know, what goes around comes around. It does. You, you get known as being reliable, as being someone who, who acts with integrity. Uh, that always is going to stand you in good stead. Always. Be good. Yep. It's a be too good. small of be an good. industry, and we all need to be supporting each other. And uh, be transparent with the people who give you work when other people come to you. Because it's not <clears throat> worth it for either of you. Because in the end, if, you're, if, you, get, if you have somebody you're doing work for, and then one of their clients comes to you. First of all, it's a dick move, speaking of uh, without an accent. 
British accent. It's a dick move. And if you then tell the person who you are working with what's going on, you're both better off for it because that person who came to the other person it is just bad news. And mm -hmm. you're going to have a, a lifelong relationship <clears throat> with the other company. And there's a, a certain amount of trust that then gets put into place. And you know that each of those companies, yourself and the other company or individual have each other's back. And that's what this whole industry is about. We got to have each other's back. That's yeah. the deal. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. If you can Jen, like a baby at night with good ethics and charge enough. Yeah. That's in a great place. That combination. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. I agree with you. Yeah. A hundred million percent. Yep. Yep. So, Jem, embarrassing, wow. your embarrassing story. We've, we've got to come back to it. We got sidetracked slightly. What's my embarrassing story about what? Yeah. Have you not got one? Did we oh, we I, went off on a tangent. We were too, no, we, I, that took us down a road of did. very interesting uh, info. I did, wow, but I got like so worked up about this. <laughs> I definitely. Oh, I do have an embarrassing story. I was doing, uh, yeah, it was probably when I dropped out. I did, <laughs> I did a video where I was on camera. And it was a series. I won't say which one. And I went out with my uncle one night. And my uncle and I are the best of friends. I love him, you know, up one side, down the other. One of my favorite people in the entire world. And we went out. And it was a good production day. And I felt good about the production. And we went out to a restaurant. And we drank three bottles of wine. I don't know how it happened, but we did. And I came in the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> we came I came in the next morning and I had to do um, on camera stuff I was presenting I was okay I was fine we didn't like it wasn't like a 6 a.m. call time but we normally what I do because I mean look at me it, there's not much you can do but I, I just <laughs> slather like like a rice powder or some like anti shine stuff on me and it was a shoot where I wasn't the only person. There was a model. There was uh, somebody else on camera with me. And one of my favorite makeup artists came up to me. And she's like, come with me. And I'm like, what? She's like, just come with me. And she sat me down in the chair. And she had to do, like, proper makeup on me. Because <laughs> I, I look <laughs> like such a – she was like, <laughs> I'm going to cover up your shit. Because I can tell that you you drank a lot last night, and you had I had like bags under my eyes, oh, and she was like, She's so like I, was, right. I was nobody. Beach, I didn't tell Beach anybody time. about nope. it. Uh, she's Beach she is my best tone. ally. Nope, nope. Oh, that's, that's she was she's Dead such an skull, white. Got it. Yes, such a <laughs> such an ally, and uh, and you know I was fine on camera. Um, I have other embarrassing stories that are not production related, but that one I. I was internally embarrassed because I just felt like, you know, the professionalism kind of um, dropped a little. I wasn't happy about that. But we got through it. The content was there. And I would say that that was, uh, for me, embarrassing. So there you go. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes. I don't think I've got a, a – not, not, that's a really good one. I love that. By the way, I think I'm losing. I think I'm losing weight here in uh, in 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 the, my quarantine and the self isolation. I thought that I was going to be like eating junk food all the time. I'm just trying to get away from stuff. I'm in this room. It's like I have a snack in the morning and then I have dinner. It's working out for me here, kids. Bingo. It's working out. There you go. I'm, there you go. I'm struggling to drink very much as well. I'm noticing. Like I'll I'll pour a whiskey, like a big one. I get halfway through it. I'm like, no, not feeling it. It's really mm. odd. Yeah, I don't I think, think it's Caleb it's and I have that problem, thing. but that's okay. No, clearly, clearly. So I think my only... On the weekends and Wednesday nights. Yeah. Right. I'm doing my, my yeah. soup every right. couple of weeks. The bone I'm not, broth? Like, not I'm drinking. Good just, yeah. I don't know. I'm just not drinking more than one drink, which is normally mm, I get the, yeah. you get the taste for it, and then I want to carry on. Yep. And at the moment, one's enough. It, yeah. It's very do, you, odd. do you find it gets like, it goes from delicious to like, this is like, it just it's like acid it's just like you just don't feel yes it. you just want some like a little sip of water and go to bed ne never never when no, never when socializing but often on my own yeah right. like i'll have one yeah. and a whiskey's that nice yeah. it just mellows you out enough to, for, yeah. to go to bed but yeah it, it i just want to stop exactly just even halfway down the glass now nah, not feeling that anymore yeah bedtime. i don't want to put I that love, look body. at chris look look at chris's Look at Chris's comment. No, I, I mean I am a social drinker. I, so, to, no, I, I, I honest, honestly, 
honestly, for me, it's like I can't, I can't drink by myself. That that is awful. But when I'm doing this and we're interacting, this is as close to a pub as I have, and yeah. then I'm okay. Is any of so when have? I'm doing a Right. So I'm doing a live stream or I'm, I'm talking to my friends online or whatever it is. Then I might have a drink because that's my social interaction. But um, uh oh, here's Bart. Four, 17 pounds of pork. I'm not even reading the rest of it. There we go. Um, yeah. What the I saw that Bart the other day. It's as if somebody like maybe Victor Bart, actually the other Bart delivered the meat to you. You cooked enough meat for basically the entire state that you live in. I don't know what you're doing over there, but you know, maybe you could buy a little less and uh, Throw at the least freezer, it's not man. toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. If it's gonna last another four months, then you're good to go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't <laughs> talk about freezers to Caleb yeah, don't, though. Don't, don't carry yourself subject. if you're buying That's another That's a sore subject. Don't Get have Caleb have you, oh, I didn't say that. I did not say no, that at that's all. Right, man. You know that's right. <laughs> that's not, I you don't put the words in my mouth. To take the thing down. <laughs> I was not ladies and gentlemen. It is six oh one p.m. here in uh, Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. Beautiful. Brilliant. Carry on. <laughs> Love it. Sorry. No, go. no, do it. No, you should do it, Caleb. Take us out. Take us out. Oh, geez. Because we all we all have places to go in the next room. Let's yeah. do it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give Ben the final word, but uh, in the meantime, ladies mm. and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a blast to see all these lovely names and faces and icons. Uh, Wood and co-creative, we're going to work on that avatar. That blue, sad, empty-faced man will have to change. Uh, but in the meantime, Godspeed. Hang in there. This will end someday. And uh, we'll all, you know, still be here every week if you need support. Wednesdays. It's a good time. Subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, yeah. What do you think, gentlemen? Yes. All right. And last uh, words, Jim. I have no words for everything that Caleb just said. And when he's saying this too will end, he doesn't mean Cameron Flask. He means he means COVID nineteen. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, one and all, for for joining us. It's been amazing to hang out with you all. Always a pleasure to to chat and drink with you two, and everyone in the chat. Um, Really, it, it's the, the isolation thing is kicking in a bit. This has been a fantastic tonic to that tonight, um, as I knew it would be and always is. Uh, a pleasure as always. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, all the best. And we will speak to you and drink with you next week. Oh, one thing. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, photo oh, yeah. Joseph's channel. We have a big chat with some relatively, shall we say, talkative people in the industry, some uh, opinionated people, some of my good friends from the past, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So come check out the channel. We're ready. Right on. Gentlemen, good stuff. Have subscribe. Good Love everybody. Love it. all y'all. Love y'all. Yeah. Love y'all too. Bye-bye. <laughs>